What's going on, guys? This is Jonathan, and you are on with Jonathan Adventures. So today, I'm, I think I start a day off with relationships. And the reason why I say that is because there's a lot of stuff that goes on, especially in a relationship. When do you think that you should call it quits or when do you think you should propose stuff like that? You know what I'm saying? So this is why I'm, I'm talking about that. And also, I'm also going to be talking about my time of me going to get into the military. A lot of people have asked me, you know, oh, what what I think my job is going to be, um, if I'm going active duty or if I'm going reserve, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, this is what I'm going to be talk about, talking about today. So, I'm going to start it off today with my military, with military. So, so a lot of people have asked me, what do I want to do and what branch do I want to go to when I join the military? I'm going to tell you now that I still don't know. I'm still, you know, working on that. I've been losing weight, studying, stuff like that. I am proud to say that I've been keeping on with my stuff. With losing weight, studying, you know, if you have a goal and set in mind, you should go out there and do it. Um, with the job factor of that, you know, I I thought about being a first responder or, you know, going into something where it would give me an actual career and the fact of the matter whenever I want to get out. Um also had people ask me, well, how long do you think you should sign on or how long are you going to be in the military? My advice to everybody that really want to join the military, no matter what branch it is, sign on for four years. When you sign on for four years, you can decide whether or not after those four years up, if you want to be in there. A lot of people have made a mistake of signing up for eight years and decided they don't want to be in there or go AWOL. And I'm going to tell you, that's the worst thing you can do. Court martial is not a joke. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't put yourself in that predicament to where you always, where you have a record now. Um, with, with me saying that on the record part of you having a record, it, it's, it's, it comes to my attention to where a lot of people that wants to get in the military have a felony record. And a lot of times they say you can't get in the military with a felony record. I'm going to tell you right now, that's a lie. Because of it depends on what you did. Because the military have a different set of rules. Versus you being pulled over and you have a felony record for saying having weed. In the military, that's just a control a control substance charge. That's this is just it's not a big charge. A lot of times they will take you depending on how bad or what they need you for, depending on what your job is. Sorry for the interruptions. Hold on. But yeah, like I said, it all depends on what you did to get that felony record or what your felony record is, depending on what you what you have a charge for. A lot of times, you know, they won't take some people on minor charges like domestic violence. If you ever went to jail for domestic violence and you ever got convicted for it, you know, I'm going to say it's just an iffy thing. You have to know, you have to talk to your uh, recruiter and just get the information and see if they're going to take you or not. Sorry about that. That was my niece, you guys. I had a I had to trick her to go and play. It's rude talking to other people while they're doing something, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, so, like I said, it depends on what you did, and you also have to talk to your recruiter to see if they're going to accept you. It's a lot of times they won't accept you for minor stuff, too. That's why you got to keep a clean record. You got to do what you got to do. 
to, uh, you know, to get what you got to do to get done, you know. Um, on that note, uh, with my job, like I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just, I'm going for something, you know, first responder. Um, I'm thinking about being a uh, EMT or going as an MP. And, um, that's 31B for MP, military police. So, yeah. Now, let's talk about relationships. And this also has to do with the military, too, because if you was in a relationship or a previous relationship or you are in a relationship where you have a kid, you know, a lot of times they say they wasn't supposed to tell you this, but they some some of them tell you, you know, are you willing to give up your your return rights for your kid if you have a, if you have a kid with that? You know, I have a daughter. She's about nine months now. I'm currently going to court for her, you know, everything. But, um like I said, it all depends. Um, I, my recruiter told me that I wouldn't have to give them my rights. So I'm guessing that it depends on what they need at the time or. <sighs> I'm sorry, guys. I keep getting interrupted by my niece, who I can say is one of my evilest. But I love her. She's my, she's one of my nieces. She's fun to play with and everything. But, you know, got to get your business done. You can't always play games, you know what I'm saying? Um, I guess, I don't know, that sounded weird. But, um, yeah, previous relationship, I have a daughter. We don't really get along. Um, hopefully, we can come together and co-parent. That's what I really want if she's watching this. I don't know if she's watching this. I'm not going to tell her name because confidentiality. Um but yeah, you know, if you have a, and this is not just for the military and everything, if you have a previous relationship and you know you guys ain't getting along, you have, you know, a kid with that person or you're in a relationship, you know, that guy ain't get, you guys ain't getting along, come together and work together for the sake of the child, you know, you have to put your differences aside to raise your daughter or your son, depending on whatever you have. I say that because, you know, I'm going through situations where, you know, I haven't seen my daughter in some time now, and, you know, I kind of miss her, but at the end of the day, I know she's in good hands because she's with her mom, you know, and so you got to be able to work out your differences and try to co-parent if you know you can't really get along. It's not about you guys no more. It's all about the kid, and if the kid is unhappy like now I gotta go to court for mine and and you know it can be to the point where we both will have custody you know and I don't want that to happen to my daughter and if push comes to shove I would rather for her if they say you know you gotta either work something out to where you come up with a plan or y'all both going to lose rights to where I'm going to say, you know what, if it comes down to that, she can have full custody because I don't want my daughter ever to go through foster care. And I don't want my daughter to know that I also love her, you know? So you got to be able to be adults about the things, you know, it, it takes two people to make a kid. And at the end of the day, you both have to deal with it. You got to come together. You got to be adults about it. You got to be, you got to be mature with, with everything that's going on because you never know. Things could take a sharp turn and say, like I said, I've been through it before. I've been through the foster care system before. I've been taken away from my parents when I was younger, you know, and luckily, you know, after years to come, Two years or whatever, I was in the foster care system for like two years. Luckily, my mother had got us back. Uh, I'm not saying growing up in the foster system is bad. Not, uh, I say about like 80% of the people that go in the foster system don't usually turn out right, and I don't want that to happen to my daughter. You know, there are some cases where people, you know, actually went up in the foster system and wind up becoming successful. 
and everything. But, you know, I'm not going to take a gamble with my daughter's life. At the end of the day, my daughter comes first. And the well-being of my daughter outweighs the well-being of me. Far most, period. Um, you know, and I want her to I want her to know that I love her. And if it ever comes down to the point where I have to give up my rights, I would do that. To make sure that she has a safe place to go. And I will always make sure that she knows that I love her. And I hope that at the end of the day that her mother shows her that I love her also. Whether it has to be reversed, you know what I'm saying? If it comes down to the point where I have to give full custody and, you know, my, my um, ex lose custody. At the end of the day, I will let her know that her mother still loves her. Whatever goes on between me and her mother is between me and her mother at the end of the day don't matter what's going on you never talk down to your parents you never talk about your parents in a negative way because you know they're your parents you only get two you know what i'm saying two biological parents you get only one mother one father and and it breaks my heart because i grew up without a father i grew up without a father and you know, growing up in a single parent home, I know it's tough. Especially growing up in a single mother's home, I know it's tough. And I don't ever want my daughter to do um, go through that because at the end of the day, she also need a father role in her um, life. And also a mother role, you know. And, and I'm going to tell the people out there that doesn't really give a care about their kids. And I'm not just talking about a, a specific gender. They beat dads, they beat moms. There's always somewhere up there, someone up there, that's going to take your spot and care for your kid. You know, and that's that's the worst thing that can happen. Because at the end of the day, you want your kid to know that you love them. And there's a lot of things that goes through today's society, like suicide. And a lot of that is because of a lot of kids don't have that parental guidance that they need. A lot of kids are going through the system bullied. A lot of kids are, you know, just going through stuff that people in today's society is not really getting to care about. You know, you go to church and you pray and stuff like that, but are you really into that mindset to where you would give your life to God? A lot of people say they would do one thing and wind up not doing that that thing they promised to do. You know, that's what I'm saying today. In today's society, you got a lot of people that would go through, you know, oh, I'm doing a walk for this, but really don't care about it. They're just doing it just to get, you know, getting, getting that, um, how you say it? Getting into that, getting that, oh, I, don't, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm having a huge brain fart of what I'm trying to say. Let's just say bragging rights. You know, a lot of people are going through doing things that say, oh, I'm a good person. And you really know nothing about that person. You only know what they saw you. You know what I'm saying? And I grew up knowing, was always taught what's done in the dark will come to the light. I always believed that. I always, you know... Had that to where, you know, if I do something, it's always going to come back and bite me. So, you got you to look out for yourself. You got you to gotta do what you got to do, you know. So, yeah. Also, you guys, I am taking, I'm going to just put this in here. Um, this summer, if you guys want to come down, um, I'm going to be on 23rd and Burleigh. Um, I'm setting up a stand for breast cancer. And not just breast cancer, any type of breast, any, any type of cancer, but each one is going to have a specific genre. I'm going to be down there for, say, a month. Um, each day is going to be a different day. Uh, the Pacific isn't actually done yet. You know, I know it's not too long before the summer, but, you know, um, 
I'm going to make another video of when I'm going to do it. Um, if you want to come down, please come down to support. Um, every day, I'm going I'm to have a different type of cancer. And like I said, every week, that day is going to be that Pacific cancer. So come down, support, help out. And I appreciate you guys. Please spread the word. If you have someone in 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 a situation where they have cancer, spread the word. You know, I'm gonna donate all the proceeds to that cancer, and you know, to help find a cure. Um, but back to what I was saying, it's a lot going on in the world today, and I am blessed to know that. You know, my daughter's hopefully is okay. I'm praying. I don't know what's going on at the moment. I haven't seen her in a while. You know. So, yeah. So, um, that's my story. That's my vlog. Um, comment below uh, if you have any other suggestions you want me to talk about. I will, you know... If you have any more ideas to talk about, I'm also going to start up a cooking um, channel to where, you know, I'm going to uh, look up or you guys can comment, go to my Facebook page, Jonathan Howard, um, or my Snapchat, uh, Jonathan Adventures, to, uh, to suggest anything that you want me to cook. I cook it, go get the ingredients, you know, and leave a rating. And, you know, I'm also going to do shout outs. Um, but yeah, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, um, comment below. Um, also, my Facebook name is going to be in the, in the description below. Also, my, my Instagram. So. Go, go and like, and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, you want more, alright, have a nice one you guys.